This playlist collects together and organizes the individual component modules that together comprise our lecture covering that article from Lawrence Mangeur entitled Coherence Theories of Empirical Knowledge. Now, I'll organize this lecture in roughly the same way that the paper itself is organized. And I'll break that overall structure into three distinct component elements. So we'll start the lecture by framing the issue in much the way that Bonjour himself frames it. Bonjour introduces coherentism through the vehicle of that epistemic regress argument. And when he does this, not because he thinks that's the way we should think about coherentism, but because he wants to claim that traditional portrayals of coherentism oftentimes introduce it in this context as a rhetorical bogeyman, as a straw man for them to attack. And so as a result, he thinks coherence theories have been given a slight in 20th century epistemology and that they don't really reflect the views that have actually been developed and defended by coherence theorists in the 20th century. And so he'll suggest to us that we need to have a more realistic portrayal or understanding of coherence theories and their motivations in order to appreciate them as theories of justification and not to be misled by these rhetorical introductions to the theory in the service of defending other views. In the next section of the lecture, we'll turn our attention to Bonjour's specific theory. So Bonjour will explain his theory. He'll discuss it largely in terms of the mechanisms that he wants to introduce to generate justification for the system. Then we'll introduce the three traditional arguments, the three most common arguments that you'll find against coherence theory. And we'll do this in the same way that Bonjour does, by trying to position those arguments in terms of his own theory and how he sees those arguments relating to his own view. In the third and final section of our lecture, we'll then go ahead and see how Bonjour goes about trying to defend his theory against these objections now that he's framed it in the way that he wants and that he's understood or helped us to understand how these objections to coherentism interface with his theory. Then we'll see how his responses to these arguments work out, whether or not he can mount a successful defense of his theory in the face of these more or less standard arguments against coherence theory. So let's turn our attention to this first component of the lecture then. We'll start by doing what Bonjour does, introducing coherence theory as a possibility that is mentioned in the epistemic regress argument. So we'll talk about the regress argument, but because we spent a fair amount of time going over the regress argument in our previous lecture, on foundationalism, we will uh, be a little more tongue in cheek in our treatment, even though it's still pretty rigorous. We'll place coherentism as the option within the regress argument where regress circles back on itself, i.e. the circularity option. Then we'll say, look, that particular view of coherence theory, Monger wants to say, is in fact not a very apt characterization of the theory or the various individuals who've espoused it. And so we'll try and come up with a more realistic portrayal. And I'll um, mention another sort of famous coherence theorist. Part of coherence theory, Bonjour wants to argue, consists in the rejection of the linear model of justification. And the linear model of justification, as he understands it, is that regress model that we see in the regress argument, where a belief is justified through inference to another belief or beliefs, and they are justified by inference from another belief or beliefs, and so on and so on. So there's this pr linear projection backwards or forwards that is justification. Now, coherentists don't reject linear justification in total. In fact, 
it'd be shocking after all the time that Bonjour spent, you know, pounding the table about the importance of inference and justification that they would re that he would then turn around and reject it in his own positive view. Uh, but they suggest that there is another or one or more components that contribute to justification. And that is how Bonjour wants us to understand coherentism in this more realistic fashion. Indeed, right at the beginning of the paper, Bonjour tells us that views like CTEC, his acronym for the coherence theory of empirical knowledge, though often portrayed as dialectical bogeyman, have rarely been treated as serious epistemological alternatives since they've been thought to be subject to obvious and overwhelming objections. And so his goal in the paper will be to portray coherence theories in a more realistic and sympathetic fashion, and then to show that they can withstand the objections that are commonly brought against them and hence are viable theories of justification in epistemology. Bonjour is going to introduce coherence theories for us in the way that he thinks they're typically introduced and thought of in contemporary epistemology. That is, as an unviable option in the regress argument. And so we're gonna present the regress argument and use it to frame a misunderstanding or a mispresentation of coherence theory. Now, since we've covered the regress argument in some detail in the lecture on foundationalism, I'm gonna be a little more lighthearted about it. And I'm gonna have our guest epistemologist give us a version of the regress argument to illustrate how coherentism emerges as this rhetorical foil in the regress argument. If asked to justify a belief that I should be elected governor, you would probably cite previous justified beliefs you had, like a, I'm so fit and tough, I'm a self-made man, and so on. Suppose some soon-to-be-dead person were to ask you to justify those beliefs, however. There would only be two possibilities. Either you are justifying those beliefs uh, with the inference and reference to other beliefs, or those beliefs will be self-justified. Suppose that you justify them to the inference with reference to other beliefs, and so your beliefs that I'm so fit and tough and I'm a self-made man and so on, these beliefs will be justified by reference to other beliefs that you had. Such a chain of justification, however, will either go on infinitely, which is the infinite regress, or it will loop back upon itself, which is the circular regress, or it will end in an unjustified belief, which is the finite regress. If one were the case, if we were to end with the infinite regress or for the infinite regress, or the on, that clearly there would be no justified beliefs, since each belief's justification would depend upon a never-ending appeal to other beliefs, and the chain would never could be completed as it is infinite. If there were second option employed, then the regress chain would circle back upon itself, and at some point a previous belief in the chain would again be appealed to in the course of our justification, and then no belief would be justified, since the chain of justification would be circular, and at no point did we have justification originate in the chain. And so when we are trying to see if we can justify these beliefs that are so obviously justifiable that I am a, I should be governor or that I'm so fit and tough or that I'm a self-made man, these beliefs are obviously justified. And so if our one infinite regress possibility does not work and our two, our circular regress possibility, it does not also work. We only have a one possibility left on which we can uh, inferentially justify this belief. In option three, then, we justify our beliefs by reference to other beliefs, and then those beliefs, again, are justified by reference to other beliefs, and so on and so on. But we see that this ends in an unjustified belief in our third option, and that is so obviously not going to result in a belief being justified that even a Democrat can see this. If we aren't in an unjustified belief, then again, we have no justification introduced to our justifatory regress and it cannot then go forward into the other beliefs to influence and justify the beliefs that are so obviously justifiable like I should be governor, yeah. So this only leaves us one possibility. There are no 
infinite regresses. There are no circular regresses. There are no regresses that end in an unjustified belief that will ultimately work to justify our beliefs. And so our regress must it go back and it appeals to other beliefs and appeals to other beliefs, but ultimately it must end in a belief that is true and is also self-justified or intrinsically justified. It is good in and of itself, I would say, yes, yes, very good. And so we have this possibility, the basic belief, and this must be the way that the beliefs get justified because obviously here they are. I am so very much justified in believing that I should be governor. Yeah.